It is an emergency podcast. Emergency many, edition. Many, 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 many. I thought we were talking about Trent Grisham homering in an 18-run performance at spring training. Trent, Trent, <laughs> Trent. <laughs> nope. It's the Manny Machado pod, the biggest story surrounding the Padres at spring training, which threatened to kind of linger through the course of the season. Well, that will not be the case, Derek Togerson. Nope. As uh, reports from the usual suspects suggests, Manny Machado locked in long term with the Padres, where he in all likelihood at this case, uh, this point, I should say, will finish his career, which has got a great ring to it. We'll be with you for uh, 20, 25 minutes or so uh, to discuss today's news. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. Well, the Friar Faithful woke up to some fantastic news early Sunday morning. Derek Togerson, the question that's kind of been lingering and uh, hovering around the Padres uh, since really before spring training and and continued to come up and and be a major topic, uh, a major topic, no more, Uh, no more uncertainty around the future of Manny Machado. From the looks of it, at the point where we are recording, or at the time that we were recording, not quite official just yet, but when the Passons of the world and the Cassavels and the Dennis Lins of the world are reporting it, generally that tells you what you need to know. 11 years, 350, which I, I think I meant to go back to see what your number was. I'm pretty sure that was close to what you had said in the Thursday pod, uh, but 11, 350 ahead for Manny Machado to keep him in San Diego. Yeah, I said 350, 355, somewhere in there. Now, I said that over 10 years, but uh, I'll go ahead and just call, call this a win. And you're right, as long <laughs> as it's like not, not Rosenthal or Nightingale, you know it's going to come from a, a reliable source. Um, this is it's, it's fantastic for the Padres, fantastic for Manny Machado. Um, when he goes to the Hall of Fame, he's going to have a Padres hat on now. Hmm. Him and and you Darvish and so, so many other guys who we're seeing now in the primes of their careers. And I'll tell you what, man. The Padres for the next five years, they know their championship window is wide open. Even if guys like Hayter and Soto, you know, they leave. You've got Manny, Fernando, you, Joe, and, and Xander. All of them tied up for at least the next five years. And that's a nice nucleus to build. Or you can work the fringes, you know. You know Robert Suarez is another guy in there for another four years. You work, get, get other guys around there. Bring up a couple of the young, maybe Jackson Merrill becomes a guy. You know, Jake Cronenworth sticks around for another few years. Even if you, you, you lose some of these superstars, you've got the nucleus, the core to build a championship team around for the next five years, which is just astonishing to think about for the, for the San Diego baseball club. And it's cool seeing how much praise they're getting from around the game um, from folks that appreciate what they're doing, the investment that Peter Seidler is making and a team that is that is truly going for it. And every so often you you hear somebody say or, or um, you know, assert that their window is is short, right, that that it's only a couple years or whatever. Well, that's obviously not the case anymore. And, you know, if if a situation had if things had played out in such a way that Manny Machado had gone elsewhere after the season, they're still well positioned because of the guys that you mentioned, but well positioned to be a playoff team. Right. Uh, and and maybe win a couple, you know, a round or two here or there, depending on how other chips fell. Now, I mean, you're looking at a team that, you know, based on those guys and the surrounding pieces who you also mentioned, I mean, they, they would appear to be among the class in the top tier of the national league now for the foreseeable future, because who else is, is stocked up that the way they are um, for the years to come. I I can't think of anybody, I'm sure without looking at the the Mets situation, but they're they're the, one of the teams that jumps out Phillies. They appear to be one of the teams that jumps out, but right now the Padres are, are up there with anybody. um, Now that Machado is, is locked in long-term and also uh, worth noting Based on what we've heard, no trade clause, no more opt-outs. 
So we won't, awesome. yeah. we won't be in another situation like this in three, five years, what have you. Manny Machado is, is here to stay. And uh, you, you had mentioned him going into uh, the Hall of Fame with a Padres cap. And, and A.J. Casavell tweeted a great quote from Manny. Um, he said, smiling wider than usual. Manny said, they believed in me since day one, and here we are. We're excited to be here for the rest of our careers and have this hat going into the Hall of Fame, which is oh, just fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> We're going to see Manny Machado get his 3,000th hit in a Padre uniform. Mm. We're going to see Manny Machado potentially get his 500th home run in a Padres uniform. Those are two things that we I mean, t- t- we saw Tony get hit number 3,000. We haven't seen anything else. No, nothing like that in a Padres uniform. It's 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 fantastic to be able to see what he's doing with this. And I know for the folks who were talking about, you know, they're paying Xander and Manny when they're 40 combined, like $60 million, whatever, whatever it's going to be way down the line. And the way I look at it is this. You can have a couple of bloated contracts if you have other guys who are not paying anything who are contributing. All right. Um, look at look at like the NFL. Look at what the Jacksonville Jaguars did this last season. They're not paying Trevor Lawrence anything. He's on a rookie quarterback deal. So they went and spent a truckload of money on some receivers and some defensive players, and they went from the worst record in the league to winning the AFC South and become one of the last eight teams standing in the NFL playoffs. And they can do that. You can spend a bunch of money elsewhere if you have guys who are contributing where you don't have to worry about paying them anything yet. So now the onus is going to be on A.J., and Chris Kemp and the development team, they can keep this going and still be good and viable when they are, and let's face it, overpaying for the left side of their infield, both being 40 years old. (laughs) If you can go out and get guys who are younger, you know, Jake Cronenworth pre-arbitration, you get six of those guys, you're going to be able to win a whole lot of baseball games. So now they've gotten this part of the major league roster taken care of. You can be viable in 2032 and 2033 if the guy Mm -hmm. draft now turn out to be some if dylan lesko turns out to be a stallion if Mer- uh, jackson merrill turns out to be a stallion you can do that later on down the line and the guys that they continue to add to the system that's that's going to be key moving forward now and maybe even keep this championship window open for a decade like the dodgers did and just really never took advantage of yeah you make a great point and just think about the guys that have come up through the system many of which have been used in trades and you know around 2019 it was it was tatis and paddock and Luis arias is coming up and you know then it's patino and gore and and some of these other guys and then it's cj abrams and robert hassel and then all of a sudden it's james wood and jackson merrill it's like they've constantly drafted well you know at, at the top of the draft and develop guys that have been attractive to other teams that's allowed them obviously to make trades for the Snells and Darvishes and the, the Sotos and, and the list goes on. Um, but then you have a situation where like they've got two basically top 10 prospects in baseball that they drafted James Wood and Jack Samara, one of whom is still in the system. That just goes to show you the quality of the guys that they've been able to draft. And within a year or two, they're, they're highly regarded. They're looked at as, as potential, you know, key pieces for the team or, of course, guys that they can flip for, you know, a starter or for an outfield or what have you. And that's, I think, such an important piece of the puzzle, the fact that um, the the cabinet isn't empty. They, They haven't allowed it to get empty because they've drafted so well. And that's, you know, that that bodes well for their future, um, just knowing that based on what A.J. Preller has done and the the scouting team has done, there's constant talent that's coming up through the ranks. And one of the big stories this spring is is Jackson Merrill. His first spring training game goes three for three and everybody's just raving about the guy. Um, who's now kind of shooting up the prospect ranks. When you couple that with all those cornerstone pieces that are now in place, uh, it just makes the future look even better. In 11 years, Ethan Salas will be 27. Ethan Salas, another one. He'll be entering his prime, which is awesome to think about. They've Mm. got, they've, they've got, man, we've seen it with the, with the talent evaluation, how they built the system and then turned it into what it is today. If they can continue to keep the system the the way it is and just keep building and, and identify and draft well and sign the right guys in the international market, they can they can make this viable for a decade, which is now I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I never would have thought in a million years it would actually have a chance of happening. I mean, this is the first time that we were 
that I can remember in the 18 years I've been covering the San Diego Padres that any given day, all 162 games, they have a chance to either be the better team on the field or equal to who they're playing. Hmm. I don't know how many times they would run up against uh, Kershaw's on the mound. They can't win. Scherzer's on the mound. They can't win. Strasburg's on the mound. They can't win. You, you knew going in, there was no chance for them to win that baseball game. And now there's not going to be a single night that they take the field in 2023 that you don't think they've either favored to win this game or they've got a puncher's or a 50-50 shot to win this game. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's awesome to be in that situation when the talent level was reached where it has given where they were really not too terribly long ago. No, I mean, think about you know, when, when Tatis and Machado arrived 2019 and just how far they've come in the four and this being the fifth season since, uh, it's, it's astounding, uh, in those four seasons. And, and one of which of course was a 60 game season, uh, but 108 homers, regular season for Machado, 340 RBIs, 280 average, 855 OPS, 136 OPS plus hundred, of course, being average two-time MVP finalist, two-time all-star silver slugger. What is crazy about Manny Machado, he hasn't won a gold glove since like 2015, which is Screw you, Nolan Arenado. Which just seems criminal. Um, but he has accomplished a ton since he arrived, and you've got a guy that, based on everything he said, is, is super motivated to play at a high level, and you mentioned those milestones. Those seem to mean a lot to Manny Machado. I don't think he's going to stop chasing 3,000. I think that's if you were to ask him what his goal, individual goals were, I, I bet that would be you know somewhere close to the top of the list. And he's talked a lot about Nelson Cruz and wanting to emulate what what he's done, playing at 42 years old and looking good and being productive. If you have a guy that has that kind of mindset and um, just the the desire to to win at the highest levels uh, and and who's shown great leadership capabilities. It's just uh, you, you got to love uh, what you have. And on top of all that, he only raised his AV 1.8 million. And I think that yeah. was a big concern, right? Is like that number yeah. kind of gets bloated. That wasn't the case. I didn't. I mean, I'm not sure I would have believed you if you had told me a week or two ago that they'd get him and it'd be 38, 31.8 million on the average. I, I thought it would have been close to kind of that middle tier. And so uh, just a, another fantastic, um, you know, more fantastic work from, from AJ Preller and Peter Seidler and, and the whole front office to, to not just lock a guy in. And again, the years are one thing. And we said it last episode, like who cares what happens when they're 41, if they've won a world series, it's not really going to matter. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that they've locked these guys in long-term on palatable deals, just like they did with you, Darvish, is such a huge win when we've seen uh, contract values just skyrocket. Yeah, baseball went crazy this offseason. <laughs> Everybody did it. The year after the lockout, nobody could help themselves anymore. And now we're already talking about trying to put a salary cap in. And we're going to be right back here in 2026, whatever, no. whatever it is. We'll leave those to the people like the Tony Clarks of the world to be able to <laughs> take care of, right? And by the way, Tony, never let them have you let, give you a salary cap. Fight the salary cap till the end of time because it's – it, it's not fair to the players. The owners need to figure out how to make this work. I think everybody's hopefully, hopefully Rob Manford is not reelected and we can get somebody in there with a clue that <laughs> baseball is actually all about. And then we can move forward and never have these kind of labor strife for these concerns or looming lack of deals in the future. But they, Manny got what he's, what he deserves. When you look at what baseball economics are, when you look at the numbers, look at what everybody, other you know, guys are getting, Manny got what he deserves, which is awesome. And what's crazy is, as you said, what Manny deserves is palatable for the team. So this is one of those great deals where it's it's fair for both sides, and it's awesome that it was able to get done before the start of the season. So this is not kind of like that that little thing in the back of your head where you're mm. like, oh man, you know. Ugh. Yeah, it's a great year, but I don't know about Manny next year. And then you have to ask him that during the playoffs. Like, yeah. what if your last home game? I beg him. None of that's going to happen anymore. Now it's just full steam ahead. And oh, by the way, what's Manny do in his first Cactus League game? Go out and go two for three with a double and a run, RBI and a run score. He's, all the guy does is hit line drives. He's hitting 800 this preseason. It's 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 a fantastic. He's going to go and rake for the Dominican Republic and the WBC, <laughs> and rake for the Padres all year, and rake in the postseason. And then you know he'll be he'll have his own float when we're going. Is it? Have you decided if it's up or down Harbor Boulevard? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I would guess. Uh, 
Well, where's where's the landing spot, right? The landing spot would have to be Petco, right? Yeah, they, they all got to get out of Petco for the big old party. So then down, you'd, you'd be moving south, right? Towards Petco Park would be my guess. Through so downtown. Where do you, yeah, where do you where do you start? That that'd be that'd be the the fun part. Mm. Somewhere near there. Nah, how about never. how about you start uh, at Snapdragon Stadium where Qualcomm used to be, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then your your way on down. There you go. Well, Siler mentioned is going to be by flo uh, by boat as well. So there's another thing to consider yeah. too. That's, that's uh, right. We got the steel boats here. Like then Boston did the duck boat. So maybe go down Broadway and then hit the harbor, drop into the water, go down the harbor for a little bit, pop back out somewhere near Fenway. Uh, Fenway. Wow. Uh, Petco. <laughs> That'd be, I'd, I'd take it. I would definitely, I would absolutely take you. Can you, uh, you launch a shelter Island? Maybe go out a uh -huh. little bit and come on back in and then go by down by the airport, down Harbor. And then, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Seaport village. It's as good as planned. Done. <laughs> All right. Now we got that taken care of. <laughs> the other thing too, you know, going along with the average value, we, we've talked about how much money could potentially come off the books after this season with Snell, Hader, Pomerantz, a couple years with Hosmer. You're looking at 50 plus million, depending on what happens with those guys. Uh, you haven't really dipped into that. And so now that allows them to be flexible with Soto coming up and with Otani potentially coming up. The crazy mm -hmm. thing is like they've done all this. They spent like seven hundred thirty eight million dollars this offseason and yet still would appear to remain financially flexible enough to invest in at least one of those guys, which is just bonkers. It's great, isn't it? Especially hey. since Soto's, I mean, they're, they're paying Soto now. So it's not like, you know, Otani, you're bringing a new player. So it's completely fresh money. Soto, he's making what? Somewhere in the twenties, you know, add another fifth, 10, 15, somewhere in that neighborhood to that. Well, that's easy based on Pomeranz coming up, Snell potentially coming up, Hater coming up, Hosmer coming up. Now it'd be great to keep Snell and or Hater. Um, but there appears to be money there. This is the question I have with, with Soto. And I, th and I think everyone agrees he's going to have an absolutely monster season this year. This is looking like I it. mean, an MVP caliber year again. Um, three for four, two doubles and a bomb today <laughs> as we tape this on Saturday. Um, his swing looks great. He's 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 going to be great. Um, just please don't drop routine fly balls down the line anymore. <laughs> Screwing Ryan Weathers over. That was that was bad. That was bad. That's your gold glove finalist right there. Yeah. Wow. Um, which makes me not feel bad at all now that Manny has not won a gold glove. Is obviously it's a stupid award the way, the way they hand it out. Um, is he going to, at his age, this is where the, the, I don't know how the negotiations go. Much younger than Manny with already an accomplished resume, right? So you're paying for a guy who's really still entering his prime. Does that mean he gets more money? Or since Machado has shown a longer track record of doing it, and has become that clubhouse leader and offers that component and of course the defensive components. Does that mean more? You know, is, are you talking about a guy who has proven time and time again, he can do this or a guy who's like, look, you see what the potential is like that, like they did with Tatis, you know what the potential is. You're going to be getting that as you're, as you're rising the tide here. You know, that's, that's what I don't know. And is Scott Boris going to want to go, all right, this is the age 24 season for Juan Soto. He'll be 25 when he finally hits free agency. Does he want to do a five-year deal yeah. with a massive AAV and then do another one when he's 30, when he's still definitely in his prime? Or does he want to try and, you know, just get everything he can right now and do a 15-year contract? Is it a, a $500 million contract at 16 years isn't really all that bad. So I don't know my, what which one's going to be more uh, more desirable to Juan Soto and Scott Boras. That that's what I'm curious to find out. Yeah, I would guess a a a deal that's double figures in terms of the length, but with an opt out when he's like 29 or 30. So similar to Machado, Machado contract, right. in structure, higher value because of the age at which he will be, and and just you know the fact that he's an historically accomplished hitter um so i would think you know pricier than the machado deal but structured similarly 
in that it gives him a chance to then cash in again in his prime and sign like another 10 year 400 375 type deal at Do that point Trout did more or less but then gives you the insurance rather than like just signing a five year with a huge aav where you know say he suffers some unforeseen injuries you know and and then his value that would that would dent his value not being in a position where they would not then be able to earn being in a position where all he has to do is trigger that player option and he's continuing to make you know mid 30s low 40s whatever it is for another five seven years what have you so that would be my uneducated guess that that sounds about right yeah do something for five years get get an opt-out in there after year four or whatever do something for 10 years get an opt-out after four or five um where he can then go out and try and get paid even more than what he's going to get get, get paid i'm wondering if after this year with all these really long-term contracts with no opt-outs for most of them, by the way, hmm. if we're going to start seeing guys, maybe because there, there's like a trend in baseball and that's something that's really popular for a little while. And that kind of goes away. I'm wondering if that's going to be the trend with, with this one now, again, trying to get that, that monster long-term deal or cash in quickly, do another one, cash in quickly, do another one, cash in quickly, do another one. The injury thing is always the thing on the back of people's heads. I doubt a guy who's 24, 25 years old is thinking a lot about the injury thing. Maybe that's where his agent comes in. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be very curious to see what he wants to do. And as we talked about in the last podcast, kind of in the back of my head, even before this Manny stuff, I'd kind of written off Soto after next year because I think he's going to want such an astronomical number that he's the Padres will would probably be smarter going out and getting three all-stars and letting him go somewhere else for that astronomical number. Um but I, after seeing this, man, I don't know. Maybe maybe Juan wins a World Series here and is like, I never want to leave. Maybe I'll take a little thing that's a little more palatable for the team so I can stick around here and win three World Series in the next decade. Who knows? I know you're not going to like the source, but from Bob Nightingale, the San Diego Padres are just getting started. In nine months, they will be in strong pursuit of free agent Shohei Otani. In the next two years, they will try to sign Juan Soto to a contract before he hits free agency. And so that's an insider type, you know, whether everybody has their Bob Nightingale show. That. We're not even uh, insiders that can tell you that. But, you know, so many people have questioned their ability to sustain this. So to have somebody like Bob Nightingale saying, oh, no, they're in it on these two guys and it's going to continue. I feel like means something. I know you've got you've you've got to do some TV stuff here in a moment. Let's let's circle back to Machado. Final thoughts just on today's news, what this means for the Padres and their fan base. It means that. This team, as we said, this team is going to be a legitimate World Series contender through at least 2027, which is, I mean, you're talking about how many other teams can say that, right? As you were mentioning earlier, I was thinking about, okay, the Mets, maybe two or three years that we know about because they're, let's say their starting rotation is getting old. Hmm. Um, the Dodgers, as long as they have Mookie, as long as they have Freeman, they're probably going to give Arias a long-term deal, maybe, maybe May. They're going to be a threat. But do any of them have the same kind of, of nucleus that the Padres have for the next five years? And I honestly can't see anyone who has that. Not, not the Phillies. I mean, these are not the Cardinals. These are some great ball clubs for the next two to three years. I don't see anybody going all the way to five right now. Which made the Astros, maybe? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know who else can match what they have at the moment. And it's just so cool to see. It's almost like you're pinching yourself. You know, like my neighbor Danny walked out this morning. So he's like, hey, how about Machado? I'm like, I didn't even know Danny liked baseball. <laughs> you know, I knew he played in Little League. But he's like, hey, how about Machado? Like, That's awesome. Comes with a lot of pressure. And I said, hey, I'll put up with a lot of pressure for 350 million bucks. Yeah. Okay. You can yeah. throw all the pressure on me you want. If you need me $350 million to do it. And as we see with Manny, it's almost like he's immune to pressure. You know, mm -hmm. he's just so cool. He's so confident. He's so sure of himself that he, and he understands the game of baseball at such, such a molecular level that he doesn't let that get to him ever. He knows some days you're going to have great days. Some days you're not. You just keep on being consistent, putting the work in and the balls are going to start falling for you. It's such. It's one of those contracts you look at. Even with Tatis, I was like, 
injury things maybe a bit of a concern. You know, with Bogart, it's like, ah, the lack of power is maybe a bit of a concern. I look at the Manu deal, I'm like, that's, I have no concerns about this. I legitimately <laughs> have no – the man has not been on the injured list since it was called injured reserve. 2014 was the last time he missed any games. His durability is legendary. You saw when he yeah. almost ripped his ankle off his foot, off his leg uh, last year on Father's Day in Colorado. He missed a week and a half. You know, he's he's so durable. He's always there. He puts in so much work that people don't even see. You and I get to see it at spring training. People don't see how much this guy puts in and how hard he works and how just naturally talented he is. And when you've got a guy who is naturally talented, with his God-given ability, and who works the way that they work, you get the Manny Machados of the world. You get the Ken Griffey Juniors of the world. It's going to be so great to see him just leading the Padres charge for the next decade. And other guys want to play with him, man. Other guys are going to want to come here as free agents, or maybe even stick around as free agents. It's He was the first really brick to be put in the foundation five years ago. And now he's going to be the guy who that foundation continues to grow around. And it's just, it's just awesome to see. It is. It is. I, I kept thinking, you know, the, the uh, famous line, what a time to be alive. What a time to be a Padres fan um, because of just how far they've come and the investment that Peter Seidler and AJ Preller and company have made. And, you know, every step along the way, when it's come time to, to pay somebody or to be aggressive, to make a big deal, they've done it and they've taken care of their own. And I've seen people give them credit as, as well today for not manipulating service time and, and moving their prospects up the ranks and, and that sort of thing. They've just done all the right things and they have had such a significant um, the, the way they've 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 operated their business has gone so counter to so many small market type franchises, which has earned them so much praise and, and rightly so. It's just cool seeing a franchise operate the way that they've operated and you got to spend money to make money and, and they're doing yeah. that and they are. They're doing everything they can to bring a championship to San Diego and to the fans that have just lived and died with this team. And it's been an incredible thing to behold. And uh, it's just like, what an incredible era to be a fan of this franchise in this city. Uh, it's just fantastic. And I'll tell you something. I've thought about this. I, I'll, be, I'll, be, uh, I'll be candid here. I grew up in Philadelphia. My my wife during the playoff series is like, well, we can get, you know what? We just had twins we can get one. We can get them Phillies hats. I was like, you know what? And so I thought about that. Like, how am I going to raise my kids, you know, and their fandom? And I was like, how selfish would it be to have them be Phillies fans? Because I grew up as a Phillies fan when they've got this wildly entertaining, incredibly fun, energetic team that's full of talent in their backyard. And they're going to be able to go to those games and enjoy this team. And I, I just thought, you know, now being a parent for the first time and like sharing those experiences, like I want them to enjoy that and to experience that. And who cares what, how I grew up or anything like that. Like, if you're in San Diego, you should be a Padres fan and how how fortunate you are to be around during this era. And so uh, it's just been so cool to see this whole thing take off and to now know just the potential that they have on their front door. It's amazing. Two things there. One, Manny Machado will be a Padre when your kids are in sixth grade. <laughs> Which is wild. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy to kind of think about that, right? Like, it's one of those, like, wow, <laughs> wow. And two, Peter Seidler was quoted recently saying, when he was asked about the risk of putting all this financial capital in the team, and he said, there's risk in doing nothing. Hmm. And that is just, it's such a wonderful, I mean, it reminds me of, like, the Bill Gates and the Steve Jobs of, of, of the world who just go, you know what, you, go for it, you know? F forget, forget about being scared. Forget, forget about that. Nothing gets you nothing. You, you may, if you roll the dice, you might crap out, but but you might walk away with the greatest night of your life if you keep it going and you let it ride. And that's what Peter Seidler is doing. He is letting it ride. And he's saying, you know what? The worst thing you can do is nothing. The worst thing you can be is vanilla. Don't be vanilla. Go out there and be chocolate, be strawberry, be <laughs> spumoni, whatever you want to do. Do something to try and be great. Because if you settle for average, you're Dick Monfort. If you try to be great, 
you build what the Padres have built in San Diego. And I'm telling you, I'm not joking when I say this. I guess, oh, where's the statue going? Damn it. Where is Peter Stad- yeah. uh, Sider's freaking statue going at Petco Park? Because that man, just what he's done, what he's done for the city and his fan base, he deserves a statue. S- now, st- ASAP. Now, do it. I'd, Ron Fowler, get, Eric Grubner, don't tell him. Just get on it now. Start building it. Start <laughs> commission somebody who did the Tony statue uh, and, and the Hoffy statue and, and the Jerry Coleman. St- get that dude working right now and put that man statue at Petco Park because who's more deserving? Maybe it should be a dual statue, that famous, now famous image of Seidler and Machado with their arms around one another. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Maybe you could build Peter's and, and then, then make add- it like in the future, <laughs> you can then add Manny next to it. You know, that, 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 that's playing the long con right there. I like that. I, yeah. I like that. Idea, darn it. Yeah. Well, um, condolences to Dick Monfort. Tough day for you and uh, a great day for San Diego and every Padres fan out there. Manny Machado, in all likelihood, will end his career with the San Diego Padres. Pretty amazing. Thanks, Derek. This has been fun. This is awesome, man. Go Manny.